and it's their intrinsic nature. It's cool, basically. Sound, sound, like sound. Yeah, that's how they do it. Yeah, that's how they everybody thanks for watching now I had to do a part two to this video because a lot of people watched and I got a lot of comments on this video you know this video hurt a lot of people's feelings there was a lot of emotional comments uh, in the comment section but I also got a lot of messages from uh, Christians who had a lot of questions who wanted to know more uh, believe it or not about um, you know the truth about the Bible and everything so you know I, I had good dialogues I had bad dialogues but the whole thing is you know when you come into information like this, when people put out information like this, you have to understand something. This is for the people who left negative comments. First of all, one, if you are not going to watch the entire video, then you shouldn't comment at all. It should be no reason. I know you have your excuses. Well, you know, I heard two words and I was disgusted and I don't want to hear no more. And then you leave your negative comment when really, you know, your feelings were hurt. You heard something that went against what you believe in. And since you have an emotional attachment to it, you didn't want to hear the rest, even though the rest, you know, could answer a lot of questions for you and can refute your religion. You know, but that's a different thing. I understand norepinephrine, as I talked about before, that, you know, that's your fight or flight hormone. It kicks in when you hear information or receive information that goes against something that you have an emotional attachment to. Norepinephrine kicks in. It's the same hormone that kicks in when you are in an argument and when you are fighting for your life. So this is why so many people can leave such uh, negative, disgusting comments and, you know, call themselves Christians and God fearing men. And they can leave such negative, nasty comments. But this is why, because they feel like they have to defend their life versus uh, this whole debate. And this is what you got to understand. Bottom line, you people who leave these comments act like when we make videos like this, that we are talking specifically to you, that we know you and we came to your house and left this video under your door or that we, we said your name in the video. We don't know you when when you live in a society, when you live in a civilization, when you are doing something on this scale, when you are talking about a topic like this, you have to do it. The way that we do things within a society you have to bring facts you have to have proof you have to back up what you are saying so you got to basically treat it like a court of law and if we were in court with the bible the bible would lose every time why because it has no facts no proof to back up its claims so no matter what you sit there and say emotionally because you feel some type of way you can't back it up you can't prove it. So all the emotional stories about what Jesus did for you personally. If a person came to me and said, hey, Superman came through my window last night and we went out and had cocktails. How, how am I supposed to believe that? So when you sit there and you tell me that, yeah, Jesus answered my prayers. I prayed and, you know, I was about to get robbed and, you know, these guys all of a sudden let me go. Or, you know, Jesus saved my life. I was a drug addict. How? How can you prove this? You can't prove it. It's your emotional experience that you had 
that you want to give all the credit to Jesus. You can't put that on the world. You can't put that on everybody else, especially when we have proof against what you are saying, against the claims of the Bible. People got to realize that we all know this is YouTube, this is Facebook, whatever you're watching this on. It's public. A lot of people hide behind their, you know, avatars and they talk all the trash they want. And they want you to believe that something is true because they know you cannot figure it out. So you have to have some kind of faith in what they're saying because they are saying it to you. People want you to believe in everything that they say because they know you can't come to their house or, you know, research their lives and prove it. You and I mean, you can't do that here. You can't do that in truth because there's no proof. So you have to put things out in a way that is factual so the masses can understand, not you and your emotions and a couple other people and what makes sense to you. It doesn't make sense to everybody else. So. The video that you did not watch, what it's saying in essence is, and you know this, that when you pray and ask Jesus for something, two seconds later, it's not going to magically appear. And you can come up with all the excuses of, well, maybe God won't give it to you because of this. And maybe God won't give it to you because of that. Then I can say, well, what about the people who are right, supposedly right with God? Again, as I pointed out in the video. If the preacher himself cannot pray, you know, can pray and basically ask God for money to fix the roof, ask God for money, you know, to uh, to, to do something. If he can't get that money, what makes you think anybody else is getting that money? The preacher has to ask you for the money. He has to p pass around a collection plate and get the money and ask you for the money instead of asking God. So just like I understand there are crazy people, you know, when I go outside, I might pass some people who might be, you know, a little mentally ill. I believe the same thing on YouTube is people who just happen to have you know, money to pay their Internet bill. But they crazy and they come on here and they say crazy stuff. I think you personally have to look at yourself in the mirror and say to yourself that why am I doing this? What's wrong with me for me to come here and type all this negative stuff or or to come here and to leave a comment that I know it's not true. What's wrong with me to do that? What's wrong with my life? And you people claim that you have Jesus in your life. You shouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here if you did. Now, fact is YouTube full of sin and lust. Is the Internet filled with sin and lust? Yes, that's a fact. You can look over to your left or right right now. And you will see videos that are sinful, lustful, that goes against the Bible. What are you doing here? So the arguments I get is, well, you're talking about superstition. And superstition is different from religion. Superstition and religion is the same at its core. That's the fact. The only difference is somebody wrote an entire book and all these stories and made up all this stuff about the Bible and Jesus. The only place you find this stuff Jesus and Moses and everything like that. It's in the Bible. You don't find it outside of the book. So how is Jesus any different from Alice in Wonderland? The only place you're going to find Alice is in that book. The only place you're going to find Wonderland is in that book. You are not going to find her outside that book, except for in movies and plays and fictional things. The difference is you have people telling you that the Bible is real. And people telling you straight up for sure that, well, Alice in Wonderland is fictional. This is the difference. You have been trained to believe the Bible is real and have been told flat out right. Oh, that's absurd. Of course, Alice in Wonderland can't be real. But, you know, a man walking on water and a man putting two of every animal on a boat and surviving three days inside of a big fish. That's real. That actually happened. A man parting the sea. It happened. So when you look at things on a rational level, when you try to convince people who are saying that something like this takes place or took place, then you cannot be mad at them when they respond to you rationally or bring up rational things. What's making you upset is the fact that it's rational and it makes sense and it goes against what you believe in. That's why you are upset.
That's why you can't handle the information because it, you don't like how it makes you feel. You feel some type of way. So you lash out. Norepinephrine, as I said, you think I'm trying to kill you. You think I'm trying to destroy your hope and faith and you know, your dreams and wishes by me simply pointing out truthful, factual information. You know, and, and people turn into kids. I, I had black people turn into racist white people in the comment section. It was like, I'm reading and these black people calling me niggers. This nigger. And it's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, that's how emotional people get when it comes to the Bible. You know, people just, they, they lose their brain. And bottom line, you can't prove what you're saying. You cannot prove your faith. It's fictional. It's not based on fact proven history that's why it requires faith now for all the people who say well you you never knew jesus and you don't know the holy spirit and this and that this is why your prayers are not answered as if i'm doing something wrong and that's why the prayer is not working as if because i have doubt the prayer is not working as i said if you watch the video i grew up in church i went to church every sunday wednesdays and matter of fact saturdays as well I was involved in the church choir. I went to Bible camp. I was baptized. I talked about all this in the video that you didn't watch. And yeah, I grew up with that whole mindset of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is doing everything. And I prayed and never has my prayers come true. And it's something that I felt to myself was, you know, maybe I wasn't old enough or maybe um I'm doing something wrong and I need to talk to the deacon and I need to figure out what's going on and what am I doing? I need to just do everything I can to get completely right with God and then it'll work. And I did that. I didn't lie. I didn't steal. I didn't do anything wrong. My focus during my life at that time when I was younger was to just please God. And I grew up with that emotion and that feeling to just please God and be a good Christian and to just read my Bible and to understand. And it never worked. Nothing, nothing ever happened. And then, then what you do, you start asking people questions. You start saying to them, hey, you know, when you pray, do stuff work? And they'll tell you no. But then not just that, you look around at the world and you see the way things are and you see evil people with riches and good people poor and starving. And then you look at the TV and you see children starving to death in Africa. You see people dying from stupid stuff, little children dying. And you say to yourself, you know, something is not right. Something is wrong. All of these people who have these issues and problems, if you are in a situation where it's that bad and that stressful, then what do you do? You pray. You change your life. You try to do whatever you can to get it right. Because it may seem like, you know, maybe it's God punishing me for something I did wrong. And I thought this way when bad stuff happened in my life. You know, it's God punishing me. I need to get right with God. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done. And nothing works. You know, for the people who come here and leave these emotional comments saying that, you know, it works for me. Jesus answers my prayers and this and that. And it's, it's a smack in the face. It's totally disrespecting all of the people who died by praying. All the people who've prayed and have lost a loved one. You know, people who have asked God for so many things that have never received it. It's disrespectful for you to say that, oh, it just worked for me. It's just this simple. You have to do this and do that. When you know you are lying. I mean, look at these children. All of these children have died from terminal cancer. They're dead. They're gone. You don't think their parents prayed for them to survive, for them to make it. And they're dead and gone. So tell me how prayer works. If God Almighty, who knows all, sees all, why would he create this child only to have him suffer, you know, before he reaches the age of 10? Just to have him suffer and die. What kind of a sick person would do that? Let's look at it from merely just a, you know, morality standpoint. What kind of person would do something like that? What kind of being? And then your logic as a religious person would be, well, you don't understand the ways of God. God does things in mysterious ways. And to you, that's logical. It doesn't make sense. 
It doesn't fit. It doesn't work, especially when there's no proof to back up the existence of this God or Jesus. Of course, there is a creator, but we don't know who or what that is. We don't know by what principle uh, that we, we exist, you know, by what law, by what force. We don't know. It's not what's in this book. See, the problem is in a whole fairy tale world of the Bible, you know, Christians want you to believe that anything is possible. You know, anything can happen as long as you pray and ask for it. It can be done. So we have something in this society called facts and proof. We have something in our civilization called, you know, rational. What's rational? Is it more likely? And the whole thing is, what's more likely that a person who happens to be a Christian can pray and ask for, you know, a car and get it? Or a person who has a job can go out and work and save up money and actually buy that car, purchase it, you know, off the sweat of their back, off the, you know, sweat of their brow, off their hard work, off their education, you know, off a hookup even. What's more likely? And we know what's more likely to happen is a person who happens to be a Christian could pray and ask, ask, a lot of people was it's too many comments about that. Everybody don't pronounce words the same way. And if you watch my videos, you understand why I have a slight pronunciation problem. But I'm not going to get into that. It's stupid. But it's more likely that a Christian who prayed and asked for a car, who asked for a job or what have you, who asked for anything, it's more likely that they went out there and they took the necessary steps to get it and they got it. And when they got it, they gave all the glory to God. That's what's more likely. What's not likely is you prayed and then months later you got what you prayed for, even though you took the necessary steps to get that object. It's almost like cheating when you think about it. So what's the whole purpose of praying to Jesus if you're just going to go out and get what you prayed for? What's the point? So it's crazy how every time you speak to a Christian or you, you can see Christians glorify God all day long. Jesus, this God is good all the time. You know, Jesus is that you got to get right with God. You got to be right with God. They will defend God and praise God and talk about the Bible all day until it comes time for them to obey the laws of the Bible. Every time you bring up a point to them, then it's an issue. Then there's a bullshit ass excuse of what the Bible said. They revised the whole Bible to fit their lifestyle. So as I said, if you are here on YouTube or on Facebook watching this video, you are, you know, sinning. You're not obeying the Bible. You are not obeying God's laws, plain and simple. So how are you going to defend that? It's hypocritical for you to come here and talk all this stuff about God, this and that. And yet you are here sinning while you do it. Even, you know, commenting and responding to a person who you believe is antichrist. All sinful stuff. You are friends on Facebook and, you know, you subscribe to channels uh, with, of people who go against what the Bible says. And that's one of the things that's just just crazy. And you, I have Christians. I have religious people who subscribe to my channel just so every time I put a video up, they can give it a thumbs down. I'll put a video up and post it and the video ain't been up for, you know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. And it's, you know, three, four thumbs down because people who don't like me or don't like what I talk about will subscribe to your video, subscribe to your channel just to give you a thumbs down as if it's actually doing something. Think about the mindset of that person. And as I said, I know it's crazy people out there, it's delusional people out there, so I just chalk it up to crazy people. You know, you know, I'm I'm a funny dude. Like I said, I told y'all in the beginning, I'm a real dude. I'm I'm not some person up here trying to be famous and get famous off of YouTube and, and try to be this wanna be celebrity where I can't respond to people. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people, you know, why we cool. Because I respond to people. I, I answer messages. I can't answer them all. I mean I have too many. But I respond to people, I comment, I debate with people, I talk shit. I'm a real person. I'm not here trying to be something, you know, different. 
So that's one of the things with me. I'm, I'm totally separate. You're not going to find too many people that come here that's 100% them. But I'm 100% me. And when you comment and leave something stupid in the comment section, if I got time and I see it, I'm probably, I'm probably going to comment back because, you know, it's crazy. It's absurd. And I don't want these stupid people influencing, you know, somebody who is really here looking for information, who really don't know where to go. A lot of people don't have time to uh, watch the video, so they'll read the comments or they'll look at the likes and they'll make their, their decision based off of that instead of actually watching the video in its entirety. And this is what happened. So, you know, it's not nothing I'm surprised that I just understand that people are emotional. And they act off their uh, emotions, even though, you know, they do stupid stuff. It, it is what it is.